Step 5. Photo detection with single photons. So let's apply what we learned in the previous lesson on the case when we have a single photon in our field. So remember that the E plus, the positive, and the E minus, the negative frequency field operators are given by the following expressions. The main thing here to remember is that E plus is proportional to the annihilation operator A, while the E minus is proportional to the creation operator A dagger. And what previously we called the time-dependent state of our field, psi t, is now going to be a time-dependent single uh, photon state of our field, denoted by 1t. And because it's just a state of a harmonic oscillator, it uh, evolves uh, according to this expression. So it's just the ket1, number state 1, times this phase factor uh, rotating at frequency omega. So now we want to compute our uh, uh, photo detection rate of a single detection event. And that's given by S times the average of the E minus times E plus operator, averaged with respect to our time evolved uh, single photon field. But notice that something very nice happens here. E, minus, e to the power of minus it coming from this ket cancels with the e to the power of plus i omega t coming from that bra over there. Equally, when we substitute for e minus and e plus, we see that the minus i times i is just equal to 1. The dot product of the polarization vector here with itself is equal to 1. And also the exponentials e to the i k, k r times e to the minus i k dot r cancel. So what we are left with is the following expression. W1 is equal to s times the one uh, photon amplitude squared and then the average of a dagger a with respect to the number state 1. And we know immediately what that is. a dagger a acting on 1 is just 1. Therefore w1 is equal to s times one photon amplitude squared. And you can go back in your own time and do the same calculation for the classic semi-classical model of photo detection, and you will find out that you obtain the exact same expression if you set the amplitude of your classical field to be the one photon amplitude. So knowing W1, we want to rewrite it a little bit and ask what's the total probability of getting a click in our detector. So we are going to substitute for E1 squared and obtain this expression. And also we said that the quantization volume V is equal to, in our top hat model as S, the width of the beam times C times the um, TW, which is the time uh, duration of our wave packet. Now we are ready to compute the total probability of a single detection event. All we have to do is integrate for long enough, time, long enough time that covers the whole duration of our single photon wave packet, and we integrate over the whole uh, width of the beam. And we get the following. All that we do is we cancel this S here and this TW here. So the total probability of a single detection event is given by S times h bar omega divided by 2 times epsilon naught times C. And we know that for a perfect detector, that we should always detect um, a single, uh, single detection event if we have a single, uh, single photon in our field. Therefore, the p total should be equal to 1. This allows us to write down an expression for this s for the sensitivity of an ideal detector. So all we do is we invert our expression here and we write that s ideal is 2 times epsilon naught times c divided by h bar times omega. But of course, not all real detectors are not ideal, and in fact, they will have a weaker, uh, weaker sensitivity given by the ratio of s over s ideal. And if you remember our discussion of the photoelectric effect, this quantity is known as the quantum efficiency denoted by eta. So eta is equal to s divided by s ideal. And this is less or equal to 1. 
So now we can write down a very simple expression for W1, which is just our quantum efficiency eta times 1 over STW, where I remind you S is the width of the, um, of the uh, beam of light and TW is the extension, uh, the duration of our single photon wave packet. Now we can ask another question. What's the probability of the double detection event? Well, we have to compute the W2 given by this following expression. Assuming that both detectors have the same sensitivity, we write S squared times the modulus of the following vector. And if we go through the calculation, after some simplifications of all the exponentials, we get the following. We get that W2 is equal to S squared times the one photon amplitude squared times this average of this long operator, A dagger times A dagger times A times A. And we average with respect to the one photon state. But we can see that we are operating here with two A's on our one photon state. So the first A annihilates one photon in our field, brings us to vacuum. And then we apply the annihilation operator again, which gives us zero. So in other words, the rate of uh, double photo detection is equal to zero. After all, this makes sense. We have perfect detectors given by us, and we started with a field that only had a single photon. So if we detect that photon, there is no chance that the other detector also detects the same photon. So, quantum mechanically, we cannot get a double detection event for a single photon wave packet. Now, what's the prediction from semi-classical optics? We said that W2 is just the product of the W1s for each individual detector. W1 at position R and W1 at position R prime. So in other words, even when we decrease the amplitude of the electric field in the semi-classical model, we still have a finite probability that we will detect a double detection event. And in fact, with single photon sources, this effect has been observed. There was a clear distinction between the predictions of the semi-classical model and the quantum model. And what was observed in the labs was the predictions of the quantum model. Always one detector clicked, not both of them. And this brings us to the end of lesson 12, where we talked about single photons. The next lesson, we will talk about beam splitters.